Good morning from the Al Sangate Trek. And I got picked up at my hostel in downtown Cusco at 4.30 this morning. Francisco Placer. Como una semana aquí en Cusco. The taxi took me over to the Paradero, or the stop for the colectivos, the little vans that go out. The colectivo took me out to Tinky. That took about three and a half hours. It has been quite a morning. And got a moto taxi to take me up. That's where the adventure started. Oh boy, we just fell over on the moto and got everything all muddy. Oh, I'm glad I made it. We slipped in some of the frost back there. It was really slick and that road is in rough conditions for sure. So the guy on the motorcycle took me like another mile up the road. I have to forge across the river here to get across the real trail. Oh, that water is just frigid. There were about 10 guys back there who asked me to help them pull this bull up into their truck. <laughs> it has been quite the adventurous start. It is 10 o'clock here. A lot has happened since I got up at four o'clock this morning, but I'm glad nonetheless to be out here starting the Alsangate track, starting to get circulation and feeling back on my feet. I've made it up to 15,500 feet to Arapa Pass, the first high point for the day. Ooh, give me a little Dulce de Leche, squeezable version. Mm -mm -mm. Dulce de Leche peanut butter sandwich. Mm. These views just keep getting better and better. People, or several groups of people that I've seen the entire trek, clearly a good campsite or lunch site. People getting lunch, got a group of Europeans, not sure from where, and then a group of Israelis, for sure, heard them speaking Hebrew. I hear these views of the glacier back behind me. Every angle is absolutely spectacular. The views just keep changing here as I'm spinning around Al Sangate. Oh, it's just amazing that people can survive out here. I'm at 15,200 feet and people either live out here full time or just seasonally with the flocks. But I mean, these little huts out here, it's gotta be absolutely frigid at night. I feel like I eat more candy, chocolate, and gummies out here on the trail in one day than I do probably in six months at home. Hanging out at 15,200 feet with dozens of alpacas up here and I don't see one other person it's just me there's just so many of them they're everywhere and as long as you walk quietly and a little bit slowly they don't mind too much if you walk fast or make sudden movements then they'll start heading the other way but I'm not posing any threat to these guys it's just fun to hang out with them look at them there's got to be a couple hundred there's more coming down from the pass here look at the size of this boulder this thing is enormous. I'm thinking if I can get in some good miles and get up and over at least one of these passes this afternoon, that I may be able to get to Pachanta tomorrow in two days, which would be cool because I have a really lightweight setup out here and nights are cold. The temperatures here at 15,000 feet drop down into the 20s and maybe the teens at night. That's a long cold night because it's dark for about 13 hours a day. So I just reached 16,000 feet. Now I'm dropping down from Apuchata Pass. Got the trekking poles out, always help on the downhill. All right, so here I am, aquí estoy con Roger, and they charge you to go across some of their land, which has happened before on the Waiwash Trek, for example. This one's 15 soles, or about $4, and he's writing me up a ticket here. This is the first one that I've seen someone out here, so it's been a lot calmer than the Waiwash Trek. Ya esto lo llevo conmigo, ¿no? Okay, gracias, muy mal. Some more friends. Hey, guys. Oh. And back up to 16,500 feet. It's a 20 or 30% incline here. It's just hard because it's hard to go uphill like this when you just can't breathe. <laughs> so you just gotta take breaks. And a lot of them, I don't really like taking breaks, but it's the only option up here, unless you are extremely acclimated, which I am not extremely acclimated. The last few steps here up to, which should be the high point of the entire trek, Abra Paloman. I'm at 16,800 feet. I'm still breathing, which is good. Just amazing up here. I'm getting rainbow mountain vibes with the colors of the streaks here on the ridge line. It's 435, so we got less than an hour till sunset. You can see the sun dipping over there, and I'm gonna drop down into the shadows, probably close to freezing right now, or maybe below freezing. It's getting cold, so I'm gonna get a move on.
Most people think I'm crazy, but it just feels good to get rinsed off a little bit. I didn't jump completely in this time, but whew, that water's cold. I'm surrounded by them. I've got about 250 alpacas and they're on every side of me. Right now, I'd like to find a local to see if there's a place I can stay. So far, it seems like it's only dogs. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes. It's 5.30, the sun has just set. I was sure hoping to have found a place by now. Buenas noches. Thankfully, didn't get attacked by any dogs. I explained the situation that got a little bit late on me and I was looking for a place to stay and so I got a room here that's got three beds, which is kind of nice. This is gonna make it much warmer tonight instead of camping out in the cold, so I'm very grateful. That's a sweet family, the mom and her three kids. We had rice, potatoes, and chicken. Very quiet and I don't think they have too many visitors out here at all because the kids just like stared at me the entire time I ate and sat there. So I didn't realize it last night when I came in because it was pitch black, but the family I stay with has at least 200 alpacas here. Look at them, they're all just waking up, waiting for the sun to hit them so they can warm up a little bit. They're mostly alpacas, but there's definitely some llamas mixed in here too. Pretty basic place to stay, but it was much better than camping out. Here's the bathroom right here. Slept right here. Here's the rooster that woke me up. Yet 4.30 or 5 right here. Storage room. Oh, hello. I slept in this little storage room that has a couple of beds back here. It's a little bit hard to breathe being about 14,700 feet. Oh, that was really a nice night. It was great to be with the local family because it would have been frigid sleeping out here with just my tent. Everything's frozen this morning. There's frost everywhere. And always grateful for the kindness of people that you meet along the way and the way they just take you right into their homes. It is 6.45. The sun rose about 40 minutes ago, but it sure has not touched most of the homes here in the little valley. Oh, the sun feels good. It is freezing this morning. It's so cold. I barely can feel my face. It's just me and the alpacas that are moving down the valley. And the legs are not feeling super fresh. This is day four out of five of trekking pretty good distances. I did the Salkantai trek in two days, took one day off, and this is my second day of the Asangate trek, hoping to finish it up today. You gotta prepare yourself for being out here. Being between 14,000 and 17,000 feet the whole time is tough. It just takes it out of you. It's hard to breathe. <laughs> yeah, last few steps up to Abra Campa. Oh, 16,600 feet. Woo! This part of the trail should be really pretty. The Seven Lakes hike that Kurt and I did a couple years ago is one of our favorites during our entire time here in Peru. So looking forward to checking it out here in the last six miles back towards Pachanta. Whew, look at the lookout here. Enjoying the postcard views here, the different shades of blue and the lakes behind me. Why there's absolutely nobody out here, I have no idea. I think the Seven Lakes hike is one of the best day hikes you can do in Peru. made it to Pachanta, yes. So the question is always, how do you get back? This guy said a motorcycle's coming in a little bit, so I'm just waiting and hanging out. All right, made it down on a motorcycle, thankfully. I'm down here in Tinque with Martin El Guia. 